Well, today I thought I'd show you how to make the fastest, quickest project ever. I think it took me about 20 minutes to do this clock. I've used my new clock tools and um, a collage image and created this awesome um, home decor piece in just like 20 stinking minutes. You could add some little flowers and some roses and things like that if you wanted to. You can use the different styles to change it up. You can use all the variations of image transfer or collage papers. Um, you can hang your clocks on the wall. You can put it in an iron stand, um, whatever you want that's so versatile. And um, imagine the possibilities for gift giving if you take and get the hard work, which has always been the clock for me, um, out of the way. And then you can just add a little art. Super simple. All right, today I'm going to show you how to use um, the 10 inch clock stencil. Um, I'm going to, I've got a collage paper, um, and I've seen this word right here that I like, and I could use that one, or maybe even this Paris one. How cool would that be? No, nope, I can't do the Paris because it's outside of here. The clock stencil almost becomes a template for me, where I can decide um, where, like I can use it as my overlay to decide where I want to use, um, where the paper, where I want to use the paper at. Okay, so I'm going to use it. Um, up here, and that takes me right, <coughs> pardon me, over to my edge, and I want to make sure I'm straight, okay, so I'm going to just mark gently over here, this isn't going to erase, so you're going to, because I'm in that band, it's not going to matter um, as much, because I know that I'm going to have that band painted on the edge of my clock. So I'll just go ahead and use it as a template. If you tack and tack it over and over on the back side of your clock template, don't stick it down on the paper because if you do stick it on the paper, then the tacket and this um, stencil will be joined at at heart. Okay, so you do not ever want to put tacket onto paper. It loves the paper <clears throat> and it will stick forever, but it won't hurt other surfaces. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip my clock over and I'm going to apply the tacket to the back side. Okay, and that is just, it's a repositionable adhesive. And I'm going to go ahead and roll that on. I've got a number of stencils that I'm going to be wor working with, so I'm going to tack them all at the same time. <clears throat> all right, so I'll go ahead and roll on my tacket. <clears throat> Two-inch foam roller. And then just apply that not generously you want it i don't want it too thin but i don't want it too thick if you apply it too thick then it becomes the stickiest stencil you'd ever see in your life so maybe for the super detailed ones but um it's not necessary to make it super sticky so i um i recommend just you know so that you can see the milkiness of it but not so thin that it doesn't provide any stick at all so we want to just do that i'm on wax paper i could do this on my non-stick mat and that would work, but Tacket is a little bit kind of a messy thing to clean up because it's so sticky, and um, I don't prefer to clean that up, so I like it on wax paper. Don't let it dry on the wax paper um, unless it's just loosely sitting there because of that paper issue that we talked about just a few minutes ago. <clears throat> so now I'll go back over and thin everybody out, and I'll show you the reason you want to use the Tacket is watch what happens. I've rolled that on. Um, and actually that came out very cleanly. Um, usually you can see a lot of like um, bleeding under and stuff like that. And some spots on the front of my stencil will be slightly tacky. Um, but boy, isn't that beautiful. I'm just so, I am so excited to have a clock stencil. I can't begin to tell you. Now I'll rest this down over here. <clears throat> I'll rest it on the other side. And then I've got some other stencils that I'm gonna be showing. Um, in this. So we've got a number of things. We've got some numbers for stencils in different sizes. Okay, so these are um, just numbers for stencil and numbers for um, clocks in different sizes. So I'm going to take those and put them aside. We've got regular numbers as well. Okay, and also in different sizes. They've loaded me up with all these items. Okay, these little jewels right here are called um, check stencils and it goes with the banding stencil and let me show you what the band let me get myself cleaned up and I'll show you what that does okay so let's talk about what these tools will do for you okay we've got a whole 
kind of clock momentum. I think a clock is really interesting because it's something that everybody needs in their house. <clears throat> and as decorative artists, you can put any art. If we're looking at a clock face, okay, you've got this, this area in the middle. By just simply putting in some flowers, some loose little, oops, I guess we could put it right side up, some loose little like lilacs or, you know, a snowman scene or a Santa face or, you know, anything. You could have a seasonal clock. You could have, um, you could have a clock that um, is personalized. You could put somebody's name up there. Um, you could, like, you could do so many things. And so this for decorative painters is something that we could give as gifts. It's things you could sell if you could make them quickly. But this banding in the past has been just like such a drag that it would take you forever to get it done really well. So we've taken a lot of the work out of that. And that's what I want to show you. So what we've got is we've got three different kinds of banding stencils. <clears throat> okay. This hole right here is to show you where the center of your clock is. Okay. So if I have, and we've got two sets, we've got set A and set B. Okay. So set A is marked on, and I'm not sure which way it goes, so it, it says on the descriptions online, set A tells you um, it does the every, um, the even numbers, so like two, four, six, and eight, and then the other one does the odd numbers, like the one, the three, the five, okay, and so, and actually this tells you right here how handy that we did that. Um, this is obviously the odd because that's 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. Okay, and what I've got here is an 18-inch clock. Um, these, this is the um, 3 eighths inch band. It's not quite a half an inch. And this is the B. Is this B? It's labeled on the side. Yeah, B. Okay, and here is the, um, this one is the quarter inch bands. And then this one is the eighth inch bands. Now, sometimes what you need is you need banding around here, just like, for example, here. So if you want to paint a bigger clock is what we're talking here, or a custom size clock. So there's banding here, there's banding here, there's banding here, there's banding here. Okay, and that doesn't always have to be, but a lot of times it is. So what you have is you want to be able to, maybe you want your banding here, you lock this in with a pencil with an eraser, okay? If you need, you know, a custom size something or whatever, then you just cut a dowel to fit. And you would be like, okay, I'm doing it at marker 11. So you would come in with your stencil tool and, you know, you've got your background and everything painted. You're going to go on the number 11 line and then you're just going to slide that around and meet all the way around. And you'll do number 11 all the way around. Then you get the set that's the A set. Okay, and notice that that goes, if I lock myself in, all the way out to my edge of my 18-inch clock. Okay, and it's marked right there, 18. So then if I want a big, thick band out here to, like, anchor the piece and frame it, then I'm just going to do this. I've got to go around, I think, like, six times or something with this. Um, we made it as big as we could, but we didn't want to have the, um, the, the buildup. So we didn't want it to be small sections. Okay, so anyway, so you can go around and you can apply that. Then after you've applied that, then what you do is, uh, and by the way, this starts down here at this 4.5 4 is a CD size clock. So you could make clocks out of old CDs, give them away, sell them, da-da-da, whatever you want to do. Then after you've applied your banding, maybe you want to have checks. And I don't know if you've ever done this. This actually, to create this tool, and make these checks evenly spaced all the way around this. Um, Dustin, our designer, had to actually do a math formula that was like that long by that tall, and it was crazy. So doing checks, the reason that checks um, stinks so bad is because it is very hard. You have to get a math formula. You have to evenly measure it. Then you have to you know, do each little measuring thing. So now you've got your outer band all base coated, and now you're going to use your check stencil and you're going to do that on there. You'll roll it around, line up the last check, and then apply the rest of your paint. Okay. And then if you want to do odd sizes, you do the odd size one. If you want to do even sizes, you do the other. Or like me, you come home with a pile of them and you have everything you need to ever do any clock that you want to do. You can choose to um, tack it over and over if you want to. 
Um, if you choose to tack it, then what you do is lift and slide. Okay, so it's not like a problem. And you can always turn it over and paint through the back side of it if you want to. So you could paint on the tack it side and you can re-tack if you need to. Okay, so then the other thing that I think we've already talked about is the compass tool. And I'm looking through my pile here. Hang on just a second. Okay, so we've got our compass tool and it's got a hole right here in the center. And this is actually designed to do a couple of things. Um, number one, it is for any round surface that you wish to have banding on. And you just find the hole where you want your compass to go and you just mark your line, okay? And then say you wanna make a banding that's like, you know, a half inch or whatever, then you can just make your banding and it evenly marks it all the way around. Okay, the other thing that it does is it evenly spaces. I've got some little um, hash marks drawn on this when I demoed it um, before. If you needed to make like even um, stroke work at any point on your um, circle up to, this goes out to 24 inches, so you could do a 24 inch clock um, or 24 inch round surface, then you can put your um, marks, well I guess your even out marks, you'd have to use a, a, a straight edge to get them um, out to 24. Well no you wouldn't because you'd be out here, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so the other thing that this does for a clock user is it will show you 3 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and 2 o'clock. So it has these lines to show you where your numbers are going to go. And then these other lines, these sub lines right here, that's where your minute hands are going to go. And they're all evenly, perfectly spaced so that when you're getting ready to stencil on your number, you know, you're not going to have any doubt that, one, that the number one is going to go right there on your 1 o'clock spot. Okay, so then your number 12 obviously goes way out here. Okay, and this is where the compass comes in handy and these banding tools is, um, and there is a check tool that corresponds with each of the thicknesses of the bands. Okay, so the banding, um, when you want, so this is for the people that don't want to paint the bands with a stencil. Okay, that's when you'd mark it. If you want to paint the bands with a stencil, then you can skip this step completely. The other thing that you can do is use this as your layout tool. So say you want to create a clock, but you're not certain how far the bands, you've got the stencil for the letters, or the numbers, and you know, you see what I'm, where I'm getting. Okay, a lot of information, but I think that you're going to dig this. This is just the coolest, um, coolest way to get a clock done. Okay, so when you're choosing, um, I had kind of a hard time choosing which one of these to make my clock out of. We have so many beautiful collage papers. Um, that are not available anywhere else. These are ones that we've created in-house. Um, we also have image transfers that mimic these, and we also have these in a smaller size, like the 8.5 by 11. So we have many, many, many things to choose from. We're going to use um, a new product to me, and this is a uh, Mod Podge brush, okay? And it is just a fancy little dude because it is so stinking big. And see how tight and short this is. So I'm going to be able to really push my medium and get it coated really quickly. Alright, so I'm going to start with my big fat brush. And I'm going to pull out from the center to the edge. I'm on my nonstick mat, so I'm not going to worry about making a mess. i got a little goober there. I want it nice and even. I don't want it too thick. I don't want it too thin. Okay, love how fast this is coating and I love the stiffness of those bristles. It's not, the, sometimes mediums take over, you know what I'm talking about? Like you'll be um, going along and like the medium will be pushing the brush around instead of the brush pushing the medium around. Okay, so I'll get it applied. I'm going to get dirty here. I'm going to get sticky. Okay, get it nice and out there. You can use this for image transfer as well. Now the deal is, is you want to go ahead and smooth that out. Don't want bubbles. Okay, lay that off to the side. And now I'm going to lay my clock over the top. And I'm going to go find my edges, slide that puppy out to the edge. Okay, wipe your fingers off as you go. 
slide it around. Having that clock stencil really was helpful because I didn't have to do any hard work to get this nice and evenly done. Okay, I'm about at the end of my my um, movability. So I'm going to take this kind of slightly domed brayer. Okay, and then it's got a little handle on it. And I'm just going to squeeze out all the extra medium. You can go in a system. You can go round and round. I'm going to go all the way out to the edges though. It's going to be bubbly, so you want to get rid of those. <clears throat> you really just want really good adhesion. Okay, now I'm going to go looking for bubbles. It's a little bit hard to see. And you can use this little dude right here, and you can flatten things out. So you can smooth out any bubbles that you have. Okay. I'll just go around and get that all done. And it's going to ooze out of the edge. the easiest clock you've ever painted, huh? I think that'll be very nice. Got a little bit of bubbles down here. Okay. Now what you want to do before you do anything on top of this, you want to flip its little face over, wipe your hands off. And then you're going to take, oh, and I need a cutting mat. Hang on just a second, I've got to find my cutting mat. Okay, then I'm going to use this little fingertip cutter. And I'm on my cutting mat. Remember that your nonstick mat is not a cutting mat. I forget that all the time. It's like ridiculous how often I forget that. And then you're just going to go ahead and cut it from the back side and release the paper. Okay? This is the fingertip cutter. Um, super, I don't know if you've ever had like death of your hand by Zacto knife. This takes all the pressure off of trying to push and hold on because you can apply pressure down with your finger. Really, really ergonomically an awesome development in Zacto knives. Okay, you can dry it or you can go ahead and just put your coat on, your top coat. I'll go ahead and just put that on there. Nice and even, nice and thin. And then let it dry. Okay, one of the things that the banding tool has, and I don't know if you can see them here, it has a right angle marker. And it's actually not stenciled through, it's just rastered through. But what you can do with this is I need to make sure that my words are straight. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. I can see that they're not straight. I'm going to get it lined up, and then I'm going to use a straight edge or a ruler. I'm going to use my ghost writer. Okay and then I'm going to make a mark out here. Maybe I'll switch it. The Ghost Rider has a gray lead, a white lead. Okay, so I'll make a little mark out here and I'll know that that's where three o'clock goes and I'll know that that's where I'm straight. <clears throat> so when I'm putting my stencil out there, I want these little Fleur de Lis lines, whoops, let me hit it on there, um, to line up with that. Okay, so that's how we're gonna get that straight. All right, so I've got my clock on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dark color and I'm gonna do my banding. And if I haven't got it on quite perfectly straight, then what I'll do is I'll just extend that banding color to the outer edge, okay? If you want your um, stenciling to be perfect, you wanna use Tacket and then you can blot it off slightly as well. And then I'll just go ahead and stencil all the way around. Because these lines are super fine, I'm using a brush instead of a band a stippling type tool. Now these band, these bands right here are pretty darn close to these numbers. I want my numbers to be dark and I want these bands to be light. So there's a couple things that you can do. You can tape them and stuff like that, but that would be like a really big drag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a different brush and I'm going to do my light color, which is a mix of driftwood and charcoal. <clears throat> I'm going to do my light color first. If I get any on my letters, I just don't care. Because I'll go over the letters, the numbers, with the, um, with the darker color. Okay, so I wouldn't want to do it in reverse that way. So 
I'll get all that done. And you can check to see if you're gonna like it or whatever. Um, I'm not sure about this inner ring. Hmm. Okay, well, and you can also lay it back over and correct it. Look at how easy this is not to have to do each of those individual number things and make sure that they're even and all that kind of stuff. Just brilliant. And don't forget, you can use a clock stencil. You can totally use a 10 inch clock stencil in the middle of something like this and paint your design around the outside. Um, so you don't have to always paint in here. You can also paint out there. So um, just because they only come in 10 inches doesn't mean that you're limited to that size. All right, I've got two coats of my stuff done. Now I'm gonna just take a little post-it note when I get to each of my numbers, and I'm just gonna post that right on there. And then I'm not gonna worry about that getting into an area I don't want it in. Okay, so then I'll just pick it up and I'll move it over here. And that's how you control your paint. And I do think I'm gonna make this inner circle in the dark. So I'll just go ahead and get that while I'm out here too. I'll do two coats with this. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush and just clean up around the edges. Okay, now we'll come in and we'll take care of some of this little stuff. You could leave the bridging or you can just patch it, whichever way you want to do it, your preference. Okay, we'll add a couple finishing touches. I've got some asphaltum and a big flat, fat flat brush, and we'll just glaze the edges. Glazing usually pulls the eye into the center. And so I'm not worried about going over that brown because that'll just warm it up and make it match. Okay. And that just really does set that off just a little bit, doesn't it? All right, I've got a brand new replacement for a varnish sponge. So I'm going to go ahead. It's a little bit um, shorter, which I don't like, but it's a lot cheaper than the other alternative that we've had. So then you're just going to wipe on and apply your varnish and allow it to dry. And your clock is done. I think it took me 20 minutes. 